In this episode, we will graduate from 1D to 2D. For that, we need vectors. Now I'm going to assume you already know some basic mathematics of vectors and tell you some results which you have to remember to solve problems quickly. First one, if you have two vectors of magnitude A making 60 degrees with each other, then the resultant of the two will have a magnitude of A root 3. And obviously, it will be right between the two. Second one, if the vectors make angle of 90 degrees, then the resultant will have magnitude of A root 2. And lastly, if they make an angle of 120 degrees, then the resultant will have the same magnitude, A. Finally, I want to remind you of vector decomposition. If you have any vector of magnitude A and you want to calculate its effect or component along a direction making angle theta, then that component will always be A cos theta. Alright, with these basics, we are ready to tackle some questions now. Here goes question 7. Three charges, 1, 1, and minus 1 microcoulomb are located at the corners of an equilateral triangle. Our goal is to calculate the force on charge C. The first step to solving these problems is always drawing force vectors. A and C attract each other, thus C is pulled towards A. B and C also attract each other, thus C is pulled towards B as well. The distance between the charges are the same, so obviously the two forces are equal in magnitude. Say F. Since it's equilateral, this angle is 60 degrees. So immediately, the resultant force becomes F root 3. Using Coulomb's law, F equals 9 times 10 to the 9th, multiplied by a micro, which is 10 to the minus 6, multiplied by another micro, again 10 to the minus 6, the whole thing divided by 3 cm squared, which is 3 into 10 to the power minus 2 whole squared. This gives you F equals 9 times 10 to the 9th times 10 to the minus 12 divided by 9 times 10 to the minus 4, which gives you 10 newton. So the resulting force becomes 10 root 3, which is roughly 10 times 1.7, giving you 17 newtons. Your turn. Same question, but you have to find the force on charge at A. The answer will change. Think about the directions properly. It's easy peasy, so pause and get the solution quickly. Please tell me you got this answer. Moving on, question 8. Now we switch from a triangle to a square. We need to calculate force on any one of the charges. Let's pick charge C. Concept is exactly the same. So let's do this quickly. Draw the force vectors. All the charges repel C, so the forces will be outwards. The two perpendicular vectors will be equal in magnitude. Using Coulomb's law and substituting the numbers, we get 10 newtons again, just like the previous question. To calculate the force due to charge A on C, we need to calculate the diagonal. Recall Pythagoras, and you will get its length as 3 root 2 centimeters. Since the distance is root 2 times more, the force due to A must be squared of root 2 times less, which is half of 10, 5 newtons. So, we have to add 3 vectors now. We will first add 2 and then add the resultant of these to the third one. Now, there is a smart and a short way of doing this and a silly long way. The obvious smart way is to first add the two perpendicular 10 newton vectors. We already know the shortcut making the resultant 10 root 2, which is about 14 newton. Now notice that this 14 newton resultant is parallel to the third 5 newton vector, making it very easy to add them, giving us a final answer 
of 19 newtons along AC. You would turn a very similar problem, but I just changed a couple of charges to negative. Pause and give me the right answer. I hope you have this answer. Okay, time now for a challenge question. In fact, I have two for you. First one is again a similar problem, but this new configuration just adds a little bit more difficult. Nothing that you cannot handle. All right, no options, go. The answer is, if you fail to get this answer, I strongly urge you to review the previous problems before continuing. Anywho, moving on to the second challenge question. You have three cues situated at the corners of the equilateral triangle. And the fourth charge, big Q, is placed at the center. You need to calculate the value of big Q such that the entire system is in equilibrium. Yes, this is very similar to the last problem I solved in the previous episode. So if you haven't watched that already, it would be a good idea to do it now. Anyways, the only difference is that this is in two dimensions. Now I will help you with two concepts. First, the charge big Q must be in equilibrium regardless of its value. How do I know this? One way is you can actually work out the forces on it due to all the small cues and see that they cancel out. But there's a far better argument we can use. Symmetry. Let's begin by assuming that the big Q is not in equilibrium and that it experiences a net force, say downwards. Now all I will do is rotate this. And I will argue that rotating the picture doesn't change the configuration one bit it looks exactly the same. However, now the force is directed somewhere towards the right. How can both pictures be correct? The force must be in one direction. Therefore, there is only one solution. The only way the two pictures can be right is if the force is zero. There are a lot of CT problems which can be solved by a symmetry like this. And we'll get back to that in some future episodes. But for now, we have this challenge question to solve. So your job is to make sure that the little cues are also in equilibrium. Now, because I like you, I will help you a little bit more with geometry. Take the length of the side to be one. You will need to figure out this distance, say X. For that, consider the triangle ABO. Since it's equilateral, this whole angle is 60 degrees, making this angle 30 degrees. Thus, this is also 30, making this one 120 degrees. Now, we can use sine rule. 1 divided by sine 120 equals x divided by sine 30. Or 1 divided by root 3 by 2 equals x divided by half. Solving this, we get x equals 1 divided by root 3. Now the problem is all yours. Here are your options. Make me proud. And this is the answer. If you have solved this, congratulations. Alright, the next set of problems will deal with pit balls. Two identically charged pit balls are suspended by strings. At equilibrium, the distance between the balls is L, same as the string length. We need to calculate the charge on the balls. Okay, first of all, we need to understand what's going on. So first, let's consider two uncharged pit balls. They would just hang boringly like this, as you would predict. But the moment you add charge on them, they repel each other, which makes them go away. At the same time, gravity tries to pull them back. When equilibrium is reached, all forces just cancel out and the balls just sit at rest. In this situation, at a distance L from each other, making this angle 60 degrees, an equilateral triangle. 
To solve this, let's chop this into half. There are three forces acting on the balls. Downward gravity, mg. Leftward Coulomb's repulsion, kq square by l square. And the tension along the string. These three forces must cancel out. So, one way to solve these guys is by resolving along the horizontal and the vertical. The component of the tension along the vertical, along 30 degrees, is T cos 30, which is root 3 by 2 T. And along the horizontal is T sin 30, which is T by 2. Thus, root 3 T by 2 must be equal to mg and T by 2 equals the Coulomb's force. We don't want tension, so let's get rid of it. By dividing the two equations, we get root 3 equals mgl squared divided by kq squared, making q equals square root of mg divided by k root 3 times l. You would notice that conceptually, this is still quite easy. Of course, mathematically, a little bit challenging. So overall, this is still an easy numerical. You are done. Here, the balls are in equilibrium farther apart because the angle given is 90 degrees. So you need to figure out the distance between the balls first using some trigonometry. Hope you can do that. Also, before you actually solve, Try to figure out whether the charge on the balls would be more or less compared to the previous problem that I solved. Take your time, solve this carefully and see if the math agrees with your intuition. You should get this answer. Next one is actually quite a similar problem. Here, instead of giving us the angle between the threads, they have given us the height at which the threads are clamped and instead of calculating Q, we are asked to calculate R. Now, I will solve this one, but it would be a great idea to try and do this yourself first. The solution is on similar lines as before. Alright, let's begin. We chop this picture into half as well and then write down the forces. The Coulomb's force, Mg and tension. They must all cancel out, so we resolve the tension along the horizontal and vertical just like before. Theta is not mentioned, but no worries, we know trigonometry. So, T sin theta equals KQ squared by R squared. T cos theta equals mg. Divide the two, giving tan theta equals KQ squared by mg R squared. And from the triangle, tan theta becomes r by 2 divided by h, making it r by 2h. Solving this, we get r equals the cube root of 2h q squared divided by mg. I hope you were able to derive this yourself. But I do have one problem for you. Here goes. A similar problem, but in this case, the question is to figure out the new equilibrium distance when the strings are clamped at half the height. Please tell me that you got this answer. Alright, one final challenge question. Here goes. As you can see, four charges are kept at four corners of a regular pentagon. You have to calculate the force acting on an identical charge kept at the center. What do you think makes this challenge? Is it just the fact that now four force vectors have to be added? At first you may think this is not challenging at all, it's just tedious math and nothing more. But I beg to differ. There is another way to solve this without having to do any tedious math. I want you to try and do it that way. No options. All the best. Tell me how you found this episode, and as always, thank you for watching.